Welcome to the Mark Silber Show, Advancing Your Photography, brought to you by SanDisk. We connect you with photographers who have mastered their craft, sharing their insight and showing you their photography tips so you can go right out and use them. Today we're here in Seattle with our guest Chase Jarvis, a multi-award winning professional photographer with a stunning portfolio. But he's also very generous in sharing his work, which is what brought us to his studio today. Chase, welcome to Photoshop. Hey, Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Tell us about your style of photography and the type of work you really love to do. Uh, my bread and butter is commercial advertising photography, although I, I spend a lot of time dabbling in fine art photography and occasionally do some editorial work, which is magazine stuff. Um, by and large, I spend my time photographing uh, those with an active lifestyle, uh, from sports uh, over to urban culture and urban fashion, uh, things that are kind of in that genre. What's your favorite part about being a photographer? Um, without a doubt, my favorite part is, is the energy and creativity that surrounds the profession. There's a lot of great people involved. Um, I get to photograph great, pe great people and I get to go to some of the most amazing places on the planet. Most of the work that I do is location based, so although we're in the studio today hanging out, uh, most of, most of what we do is out there in the world, so travel combined with uh, amazing people and being able to be creative in that environment is that's what it's all about for me. Now let's take a look at how you get your shots. What are some of the major points that you employ every time you pick up a camera? Well, when you asked me that off camera, I had to think about it for a second and uh, it quickly came to me that there's, there's just uh, you know four, four or five things that I do every time. And the first thing is I look at the scene without the camera. I walk around without the camera pressed to my face because when you put the camera to your face you see a lot less than you do just walking around. So um, I'm going to walk the area that I'm going to shoot without the camera to my face and, and look for interesting things. Uh, when I find things I'm going to shoot or uh, you know, I can build a scene in my mind then I'll start putting the pieces together and, and that's kind of a visualization for me. So uh, when I'm visualizing, I know exactly how I want this thing to look. I know I want this edge of the frame to be you know, next to this tree, and I want my subject running or jumping into this part of the frame. Um, and and I, I even actually pre-visualize all the way to, to what this could look like in post-production. But uh, suffice to say, I kind of visualize the shot. And, um, and then next, I fantasize about it a little bit. What could I put in here to make this the absolute best picture? Does it, does it mean bringing in a troop of um, <laughs> a circus troupe in here and throwing the background, or does it mean uh, taking things away? I mean, more often than not, it means, means simplifying the frame, and, and I fantasize about making the, the, the best picture. And then uh, the last, which is, I think, kind of a uh, marquee of my work, is trying to do something that is unusual. How can I put a little twist on it, or as we say when we're on set, how can we turn this one on its head? And uh, I look for ways to make it different, and uh, th those are the little things that separate it from making it an interesting photograph to a great photograph. What was the creative gap you were telling me about? I think Ira Glass um, coined the term, the creative gap is the gap between what you want your pictures to look like and what your pictures actually look like. So you might look at an Ansel Adams shot, for example. I want to go take a picture of Half Dome, right. and you want it to look like this. But it actually doesn't. There's a big margin between your picture and Ansel Adams' picture. And so we call that the creative gap. And my, uh, my belief is that over time, with a lot of effort and work and understanding, you can close that gap. And so for a beginning photographer, the gap might be massive. And for a pro, hopefully the gap is, is really narrow, so you're allowed to uh, you've taken a lot of time, you've learned, and you can actually get relatively close to the picture you're seeing in your mind. What comes out of your camera is, is looking really close to that. So uh, as a, as a hardworking pro, I'm always aspiring to have, to be able to create the thing that's in my mind rather than have some, some gap, but that takes a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time and energy, but it's not undoable. So, uh, so what's your advice to viewers who want to close the gap? Uh, that's a great question. Um, my advice is that it doesn't come easy. Uh, more than anything, you gotta bang the shutter. You gotta press that button over and over and over. And you gotta take a lot of pictures. That's the most under-discussed thing on all the forums all over the internet. And when you're sitting in, you know, with your photographer buddies, that's the thing that, that gets left out, is that you have to take a lot of pictures. And the more pictures you take, 
the, the better your pictures are going to be. Also, you need, you need to put yourself in the position to get great shots. So you need to move. You, you, you got to get out of your chair. This is, I'm talking to you. You got to get out of your chair and, uh, and go put yourself in a place where you can make great pictures. So hit the streets and hit the shutter a lot. And um, along with the studies that you'll do online and these little um, experiments and you know, by visiting some blogs, mine and others, um, all those things will come together to help you close the creative gap and become a better shooter. You mentioned to me about don't be afraid to blow it. Yeah, that's actually, <laughs> take it from someone who knows. <laughs> um, don't be afraid to make mistakes and that's one of the most beautiful things about digital. You know, I mentioned the technology just a second ago and that's really what I'm talking about. You know, when I had to teach myself photography, there was 36 chances at the end throughout every roll. And at the end of that roll, and you watch another $20 bill get lit on fire and yeah. <laughs> make all those mistakes. And now you can you can be so free to make a mistake. You know, I'm just taking a picture, looking back at my camera. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try something different. Taking a different picture, making oh, that's getting a little better. Hey, move over this way a little bit. There's a pole coming out of your head, or you look a little. You're in the bright light. Move over here, and just. You know, you can really make a lot of mistakes very cheaply and correct them very easily right at that very moment to, to make a better picture. Chase, thanks for joining us and inviting us here for photo show. It's a real pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Mark. I mean it. Get off your butts. Subscribe to our blog where we'll give you updates on photo show and give you a lot of other cool tips and tricks to help you better your craft. And be sure to check in with Chase's blog chasejarvis.com forward slash blog where you'll get an inside look into his world of photography. Until then, this is Mark Silver reminding you to get out and get your own images of life.